Hi everyone, Rose Webster here. So on Friday, I learned uh, that there were also studies ongoing in Albany, New York for this uveal melanoma cluster series that we're now seeing. So we have Huntersville, North Carolina, uh, Auburn, Alabama, and Albany, New York. And um, if you look on my Facebook page, you'll see that New York is like the third most popular hit I have for my Zika Wolbachia page, Zika and Men. Uh, organic hits, which to me likely indicates where humans are being infected with Wolbachia, probably through the Kulik species of mosquitoes. So uh, I want to show you that. I don't know when it was added. I don't know their stats. I've tried to look it up. I can't find it. I don't know any of the patients there, but uh, it's just south of our Canadian border here. Uh, I do want to clarify some things because I see a bit of a game going on with the WHO and some of the researchers that have been working on these back infected 80s releases. So I want to make it clear that uh, this has been in the works possibly for more than 50 years. And I'll show you some studies here. In 1994, there was uh, investigations of febrile, febrile meaning feverish, almost clusters of individuals from New York and Virginia with a typhus-like etiologic agent. They couldn't figure out what it was at the time. Uh, but both of the studies they did indicated a typhus-like non-spotted fever group, rickettsia, or an unknown agent. And Wolbachia would certainly fit with that. So I want to show you that, moving right along. And uh, you probably heard about the Collaborative Ocular Melanoma Study, the COMS, which uh, their touting has been going on for 18 years, which may make them seem like total experts in this field, and I don't doubt they have expertise. However, you have to know this. The National Institute of Health, the NIH, is funding them. And the NIH gave MosquitoMate $1.3 million, a grant, in fact, uh, even after it was known that Wolbachia pipientis can infect humans without the nematode, which points to direct mosquito to human infection. And rickettsia infections are, are some of the nastiest and life threatening uh, illnesses you can suffer. So I want to show you that. Um, the study group and a couple of the people in here are, I believe, Scott O'Neill and Dobson. I think his name is in there, but it said the the use of intraocular or sorry intracellular bacteria Wolbachia to control mosquito populations was proposed 50 years ago. Uh, however, you're seeing with the WHO they're saying it's been in the works about a decade. The Atlantic said 30 years, and here's study proof that Scott O'Neill and his team, which is funded by USAID and and Bill and Melinda Gates and so on. Uh, and, and three other governments, in fact, and family foundations, that um, he was tinkering with it in 1992, okay? He knew it was a proteobacteria uh, closely related to rickettsia and their relatives and named Wolbachia pimpientis. So it's, it's not as if they didn't know what they were dealing with. I see no indication that biosafety level lab three or four were being used at the time. Uh, so, uh, a couple of posts about the research funding. There was a proposition for Auburn University to have some uh, research funding. It was denied. Uh, Senator Strutz, I believe, is going to look into it. I hope he is. And uh, with what they've quoted, the numbers climbed to 30 confirmed cases between 1980 and 2001. And another uh, post said to, from the 1980 to early 90s. Well. This kind of points to me why they're going to say it's only been in the works a decade. Because it kind of indemnifies them from being involved or possibly implicated, even accidentally. This stuff can get out uh, uh, into the community and so on. So I want to show you that. Uh, I did look for uh, some severe cases of rickettsial disease caused uh, with, without a tick bite. Now, a lot of people think it's always a tick. I don't think that's what we're dealing with anymore. And I think ticks... Uh, will acquire it because the stuff can live outside of a cell for at least a week with no decrease in viability. So it's very hardy. Uh, I found a study from 1964, found cutaneous gangrene and plaques accompanied by thrombosis of central veins of the retina and rickettsial origin. 
and they thought Rickettsia canori. Uh, no abstract available, 1964. I found that with a lot of things. Same with the Okia et al. study that found bulbuls were um, per, uh, a reservoir for Zika. Uh, that's been covered up. Uh, no abstract, and only myself and Dr. Fiona Hunter are mentioning it. And uh, the study on top here, 1970, uh, three severe cases caused by, they believe, Rickettsia canori without authenticated entomologic transmission. That means they couldn't find, you know, the, the tick source, the eschar, uh, the, the, the classic things. And even the rash is not necessarily associated with rickettsial diseases. So keep that in mind. There, there doesn't have to be a rash. Uh, and sure enough, and I want to highlight this, if I can enlarge it, just a sec here, that, um, oh boy, it's getting hard to do for me. Okay, so here in Rickettsia cialis, we're identified by PCR in five species of mosquitoes. And here are the five species. In blue are the two that are known Zika vectors, Aedes albopictus and Culex quinca fasciatus. And as you know, a mosquito mate is putting Wolbachia into Aedes albopictus, uh, which we know can infect human lung cells at normal body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, Rickettsial bacteria were identified in each of the mosquito life stage, egg, larvae, pupae, and adult. Now that's key to what's happening with the North Atlantic right whales because uh, Kulix prefer to breed in open bodies of water and in rafts. They lay their eggs in rafts. They, they behave almost the opposite of 80s. They're overnight active, in fact. And uh, if this stuff is getting into the water, washing into streams, rainwater, you have to imagine that uh, co-ingestion, copods nibble away. Uh, this stuff gets out into the seawater. These whales have mouth abrasions. It gets in the cuts and so on. There's lots of portals of entry, and sure, entanglement may be blamed, but my sense is that these whales are gravely ill, and once they get entangled, they're sort of like dead leaves caught in a sewer grate. I've said this before. So getting back to this paper now, um, the, the, the authors state the diversity and prevalence of Rickettsialis bacteria in mosquitoes may be higher than we report, because they do note there is bias, and I, I believe there is. There's a big push to only have people consider ticks to be the problem with this type of thing. And uh, it says, due to better diagnostic techniques and enhanced surveillance, the identification of new Rickettsialis and or their associated diseases has increased markedly over the last 10 years. And bacteria that have previously been considered non-pathogenic to humans are now associated with disease. Clearly, Rickettsialis will present a considerable public health challenge for the foreseeable future. And uh, I believe we're on that, but there's still a big a push in, in North America here not to look at that. In fact, on Medscape, and a lot of physicians rely on them, uh, they updated their Rickettsiali uh, infection workup page June 14, 2016. It says here, no rapid laboratory tests are available to diagnose Rickettsialia diseases early in the course of illness. Well, this is when it's key. Because within the first week of infection, uh, bacterial counts can be 600 times in the mammalian host, uh, as opposed to the arthropod. And the key, even intact Wolbachia can be found. So this is very key. Not only that, uh, if you don't start getting on top of that fever, which seems to be the cardinal uh, symptom is a, a very high fever, uh, in a few days, if you can't get on uh, control of that, there are cognitive problems that end up happening and an organ shut down and so on. It gets really life-threatening. However, a lot of these people have been cured. If you look up rickettsial infections within days of being on doxycycline or azithromycin or rifampicin or whatever in combination even, uh, these people recover fully and they're told they're cancer-free. So uh, I, I, I'm baffled by what I'm seeing in North America. And it e they even go so far as to say it cannot determine the causative agent to the species level. Well, mosquito mates will black at Pimpientus might be identified, which implicates the WHO and the NIH and the other governments and so on that are funding it. Now, I want to show you something. 
in the last month, from February 15th to March 15th, I'll have to do another one for April, I wanted to see what the top 15 visits were to my Zika and Men page, which uh, the key words are, are problems with the gonads, prostatitis, and, and the symptoms there. And I wanted to see what the top 10, 15 visits were. Now, I don't know these cities very well. I don't travel that much. Uh, but I looked at these cities, and they're all sitting on bodies of water, except for, uh, t I think it's Tucson, Arizona, is the only one that didn't make sense out of all 15. So I want to show you that. Somebody in Tucson maybe likes to read my work just for the sake of it. Uh, so again, on the map here, what's going on in Taiwan? Taiwan is just across the, the water from where the 20 million mosquitoes per week are released from um, the largest mosquito factory in the world, Sun Yat-sen in Michigan State. You are running this, and they've been doing it for the longest. I can't find where exactly this started and ended, but they, they release a lot of them. Well, sure enough, the 18-year eye cancer review there, the average age was 48.7. Fairly young people. Well, over here, we know the uveal melanoma cluster near Huntersville. Two-thirds of women 30, in their 30s or younger within a 15-mile radius near Lake Norman. And I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, it's some nuclear energy, Duke, Duke Energy or something to blame. I highly doubt it. I think it's the Kulik species. I think you're going to see these cases crop up in the fall. Uh, and this is where pink people will be symptomatic because Kulik's like to, they feed off birds in the spring and then they switch to humans later on in the season. Uh, here is an excerpt from page 13. As I am looking at what's going on in Taiwan, the reemergence and emergence of vector borne rickiosis in Taiwan. And the key points here are, although biological specimens are delivered to the Taiwan CDC for screening, the etiologic agent is not identified in the vast majority of cases. Meanwhile, veterinarians often rely on rapid commercial tests that detect a panel of cross-reactive species. So again, the exact pathogen is not identified. Importantly, many emerging VBR demonstrate cross-species virulence and thus infection in either a human or domestic animal represents a shared risk. In both settings, an attempt should be made to identify the species. In the case that an emerging VBR is detected, local physicians and veterinarians should communicate the sentinel event to one another in addition to alerting public health authorities and enlist environmental health scientists, entomologists, zoologists, epidemiologists to initiate an interdisciplinary investigation. Well, this, this is totally not happening. Dr. Teresa Tam, who is on a committee of the WHO, has been served on committees of the WHOs, and Dr. Allison McGeer, who uh, works with the NIH and the WHO, both of them are ignoring this completely. And it seems no one's allowed to even test for Wolbachia pipientis. Now, if this isn't the smoking gun, I'm about to show you. We're, we're getting awfully close here. I found this uh, 2010 paper, Mutations in GNA11 in Uveal Melanoma. And these are GQ proteins, alpha type, that are found uh, in this mosquito control method using Wolbachia. Because Wolbachia inserts its own DNA, and DNA from Wolbachia, from Drosophila melanogaster, binds specifically to the human tumor gene p53 so this is very key and what it says here in our samples 83 percent of uveal melanomas had a constitu constitutively active mutation sorry i'm not saying it right in either gnaq or gna11 or gna11 and when i looked up the patent because a patent has to include all of the um, active ingredients, so to speak, of any technology or any um, drug or whatever. It actually states that GQ proteins, represented as these proteins, are GNAQ, GNA11. Now, they also mentioned GNA14 and GNA15. I believe one of those affects the lungs and the other one more the digestive tract and esophagus. Um, 
And if you remember when these babies uh, in Brazil had Zika, they had to have feeding tubes, their esophagus, they couldn't swallow. So, uh, of course, there are people that I believe are being told they have strep A, and I think it's actually a Wolbachia infection that's actually doing it um, without the rash. The rash isn't, once you put Wolbachia into another species, it never had it, and it goes through maybe birds and back to mosquitoes and a different type of mosquito like Culex into a human, you've changed a few scenarios. So you're not necessarily going to see a rash. And I found lots of studies about that. You look that up. The rash doesn't have to be there. Uh, so here's experimental cell research, September 2017. And, and here's where I, I'm, people are getting really hung up. They seem to think whales are so different from people. And they seem to think, well, bacteria can't do that. Well, originally, lateral gene transfer was thought to primarily occur between closely related bacteria species. And that's kind of a logical frame of thought. But bacterial DNA, such as Wolbachia, can integrate into safe regions into the human genome and could even cause deleterious, ah, I can't speak today, mutations that promote carcinogenesis. Or it, they can, they can d insert their own DNA and cause human cancers. And uh, so here is what you need. You need the broad range PCR screen for Rickasalia is done within the first week of symptoms. Blood, yes, any tissues that are excised would be great because it seems it really likes the liver. That's another thing it likes. And triazamine, like liver AST and ALT levels seem to elevate, but that can be caused by a variety of things. So, uh, we have to get this screen. This is it. This is what you need. But nobody in North America is willing to acknowledge or do it, even though clearly this is in the environment. Trillions and trillions of these are in the environment. It lives in the eggs, the larvae, the pupae. It's going to affect, affect a lot of uh, ecosystems. And 60% of North American men now have, have declining uh, sperm counts, and the study authors of that have said it, it's not it's not genetic. It has to be something in the environment doing it. It's not something they're necessarily born with. Something they're they're getting. So uh, yeah, you hear cancer, and people will say, well, it's a genetic thing. Well, sure. Well, back inserts its own DNA. So so this is this does make sense on many levels. So uh, because I don't suffer it, I can't seek a lawyer to fight this. But I do think people are going to have a big fight on their hands because people doing this research and coming up with these uh, treatments, they're making money from it. Surgeons removing the eyeballs are making money from it. Uh, I'm sure some, some doctors probably want to know the truth, what's going on, and some don't. And maybe some people do know what's behind it. But not testing for it is ridiculous because they're saying this is safe for humans. If it's so safe, why can't we test for it? Really? Okay, so I'll be in touch.